Helps if I turn the microphone on. Hello, Commanders. Uh, it's time to jump the carrier again. Um, a little bit delayed today due to various different real-life reasons. Uh, Commander Hatch has already jumped. Uh, the Crescent moved today at uh, its usual time. And I was supposed to move at around about 2 p.m., but then various things got in the way and um, the dog's been injured and uh, I had to sort out the vet appointment and all sorts of things. So anyway, everything worked out OK. That's that's the main thing. But it just meant that... Couldn't have said it better myself, Donovan. Um, I'm not saying it twice. So yeah, decided to sort of like move the countdown to um, now, which is five o'clock in game, and uh, we should be setting off for the next jump point it's going to be a little bit of a dog leg again today sort of a bit of a maneuver jumping into Sagittarius a star as the fourth waypoint but then we will just it, that's basically just a fly by just to give any commanders who want to have a look they may have already had a look with commander hatch he sort of like preempted me um but anybody who wants to sort of like get off who didn't decide to go with the crescent this morning can have a look. Commander Dimebar is jumping a little bit later. He said uh, should be right before nine o'clock. So it's just real life getting in the way. He didn't jump with the carrier. Oh, didn't he? Don't think there's anybody knocking about down on the deck. No, it's a quiet evening. Also, I mean, we're not that far away from Sagittarius A Star, so I think a few commanders have uh, flown their way. Not that far. Are you in there in ships? It's not that far away, is it? You know, just a few jumps. So we've got seven minutes until the first jump. Um, I got back from my trip out to the Great Annihilator uh, last night about nine o'clock in game and it wasn't a bad payout. It was about 40 million, something like that. There was a few uh, nice, big ammonia worlds that I came across that took um, 10 probes to scan. They were absolutely huge. Uh, but other than that, it really was... A lot of it was just icy worlds and rocky bodies and things like that. So it didn't really add up that much. But I was glad I sort of like made the, the trip out. It had been bookmarked for two years, The Great Annihilator. Uh, since the last time I was out in this area of space. And I just thought, not going to get any closer. And I thought it'd be quite good to stream. And it was really interesting um, sort of arriving and just sort of like zooming in towards this great big black hole. It's quite terrifying in a way. I have done some anom anomalies, but not so... not so far in this expedition, Phil. I noticed that you've been um, hunting them out, though. 
It's one of the things I, I need to get sorted. Unfortunately, May is sort of like turned into a bit of a... Um, the amount of time that I thought I would have to be able to uh, do the expedition, you know, things have just sort of like happened that usually don't this time of year. More work coming in than usual. So hopefully June, I'm going to be able to make up for it over the summer months. I've been trying to work out exactly when we will get back um, to the bubble. And so far, I think it's probably likely about September or October, something like that. I don't think it's going to be as late as November. I mean, we're, if we set off to Beagle Point on the 1st of June, we should be there for the 1st of July. A couple of weeks staying there, maybe. Coming back, so that's like the middle of August, and then... Um, what, 10 days to get from Sagittarius A-star back to Colonia? So that's sort of like... I reckon by the end of September we'll be back in the bubble. Unless we get delayed by something, like Thargoids or something. I think I'll probably need to sit down. Have you um, found anything, Phil, then, that you've not seen before, anomaly-wise? I, I was watching your stream where there was the the one that was sending out shocks onto the the shields and you had to pull back that one looked amazing Yeah, I think I'm going to have to try and check out some more anomalies, I think. I think once I get past all of this real-life real rubbish uh, this month, I'll be able to uh, be able to have a bit more of an explorer around. I'll have the free time, hopefully. Touch wood. Which is one of those things, you know, you plan something in game and then something in real life happens, so. I was quite pleased though with the amount of exploration I did in. Um, at this stop, I did a couple of trips out yesterday's to uh, the Great Annihilator, and then there was a, another one a couple of days ago. So I'm not actually that far away from Elite One now. I think probably I can. Wow. <laughs> I'm in my ship's galley at the moment. Are you? <laughs> yes. Is this, a, is this a new Mr. segment Chief. that we're going to have? Chief. Commander Hatch's... Um... Extraordinary delights. Yeah. What to do with any Thargoid hearts that you come across. So how was your jump this morning, then? Yes, it was good, uneventful. All went to play. That's good. At least it's short today. Well, relatively short. I think the, the five uh, jumps limit is perfect, I think. You move you move a nice distance, but it's it's not too much of a hassle. Well, I mean, after a couple of hours, you start to do things to live, don't you? Oh, definitely. What I did do is I, I moved my carrier in system away from the star. Yeah. 
because the <laughs> where I'd parked, it was quite hot. <laughs> right. So it getting so a bit warm. Leave, spent, yeah, as you try to leave my carrier, you got you got basted in the heat. <laughs> right. Okay. So I, I moved to the same same uh, body as uh, Explorer's Anchorage. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm intending to do. I'm just gonna jump into Sag, um, Sag A and then just wait until the cool down and then just jump out again. So anybody who wants to get off can. Um, well, I, I went straight to the Explorer's Anchorage system and then I uh, took a little ship to see Sag A. I just want to see. I just want to get the carrier into Sagittarius A star, so I can say that I've done it. That's basically why I'm doing it. Well, don't reenact the film Black Hole, will you? No, hopefully I won't. <laughs> So I don't know what time Commander Dimebar's jump and his um, thing in Discord was a bit vague. He just said sort of like by nine o'clock, so. So I think it depends on the family, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I think probably someone's had a word in that how much time he's been spending in the game. Poor old Phil is having... Um, Withdrawal from his from his ships. He's obviously missing his ships. Bless him. Are they all on yours? Yeah, I think so. Oh, we've got uh, Commander uh, Hypocrite on. Better give him a wave. Hold on, I've got to got to get out my chair first. It's kind of a bit weird. Okay, can't wave at him now. One of the things I was going to do, just check new, no, no, no more applications to the squadron. Fleet carrier. <laughs> Three minutes cooldown. Yeah, the, the, the cooldown is a bit of a, bit of a pain, isn't it? Oh dear, we seem to have left someone behind. Who's that? Well, we haven't left him behind because he's sat in the... It says that we've left Sir Hypocrite behind, but he's actually sat in the front of my carrier, so... Is that the galaxy map not updating you again? Yeah, I think so. I didn't realise that they were firing off the, um, you know, that Salvation was firing his weapon off again. I only found out about by watching Commander Burr's uh, most recent video. Doesn't yeah, seem as though yeah. it's worked very well. Well, I think he's right in saying that it's getting less and less effective each time. Not so much of a Salvation, maybe. So it's, um, I think it's setting things up, isn't it, definitely? Well, I know that they said before that, uh, you know, commanders had more of an effect anyway than a lot of his weapons. It was a bit negligible about how effective his super weapon was in the first place. But, um, yeah, it seems as though the Thargoids are adapting. Also tie that into the uh, possible the update at the end of this month. It wouldn't surprise me if you see something coming in as well. Well, I, I've been uh, doing some uh, calculations, and I think we'll probably be back in the bubble certainly for September, October at the latest. I would say. So, right. I think that will work out quite nicely for people to get settled in and get ready for the next update. 
whatever that might be. So we will have a look at the next waypoint. Oh, I've done my first jump, yeah. I said it running just before the stream started, so I had roughly about eight or nine minutes to wait. So we're just waiting on the no, too soon. Only just too soon, though. There's no countdown there now that I've gone back. It must have been like two or three seconds before. Don't you just hate it when he does that? Hopefully some of the quality quality of life updates that we're going to get. Maybe a counter somewhere. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many things come off your list. Come, come off my... Very few, I imagine. My list is very long. So yeah, today's uh, delay was all due to this little person here. Uh, this little woofer, I should say. Who, um, I don't know. She's obviously been uh, attacked by something. Something's had a go at it. The vet couldn't work out whether it was a cat or a rat. It could be either. But it basically... Um, punctured part of her eye. Oh. So there was uh, blood all over the place. I wasn't there. Dad had taken the dog. And um, I mean, he was mortified, of course. But yeah, it was very, she was very, very lucky. Um, I think it would have been a few millimeters in any sort of like other direction. Might have been a case of uh, damaging her eyesight or even losing an eye. So, so she's feeling a bit sorry for herself at the moment, as you would. When did it happen? It happened. Um, it happened on Wednesday. Day is it? The day it's Friday, isn't it? It happened on Wednesday. My dad takes a dog because uh, it's a bit of company for him. And a friend of his has got a farm. And Luna sort of like... I mean, it's perfectly safe for her to sort of like wander off and everything. Um, she can't get out. But obviously while she's been investigating something, whether she's come across a cat. And the problem is, is she's one of those dogs that's sort of like friendly to everybody, you know. Um, you know, she chases stuff, but she chases stuff because she thinks it's a game. It's not because she actually right. wants to catch it. And um, obviously something turned around and didn't like her being there, so. Michael's learned uh, a useful lesson there. Oh, definitely. I think definitely a lesson learned for everybody. How old is dog? Hmm? How old? Yeah. Three. So it'll be um, three in November, so she's about two and a bit. It's a bit difficult to actually work out because she was a rescue dog. Um, they estimated uh, when I got her, she'd be about nine months. Uh, okay. That will be a couple of years ago uh, in July, I think, when I got her. It wasn't a pandemic dog, then. No. 
No. And she spends some time with me. She spends some time uh, with my dad, like say it's a bit of company. And I think he was uh, pretty mortified by uh, sort of like being injured. He was the one who volunteered to initially go to the vets. But uh, like I say, you know, at least she got away with it this time. And she might be a bit more wary. Yeah, so you, not, you can't do much about it, really. Yeah, you can't um, remove all other creatures from the, the farm. Really. No. So what I was going to look at while we're waiting was... Oh, one one. Yeah, so that's sort of like budged along. I reckon that that gap there, that Explorer rank gap there, is probably about 40 or 50 million credits. Is that your Explorer Elite 1? Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm, it, super, I'm super close as well. It's, um... The trip out to... The Great Annihilator wasn't as profitable as I thought it. I, it did improve towards the end because there was a few systems where there was some nice um, water worlds and things, but there just wasn't enough of them. It certainly wasn't as good as the one earlier in the week. No, I had a, a good couple of water worms, but then I also had uh, some really dead areas. Yeah, well, I was getting dead areas as well. I was getting a lot of um, brown dwarfs with just, you know, uh, just rocky stuff. And also there was a few um, systems where there was just a star in it, so it, it made travelling along quite good because, you know, you were just able to jump out without having too much effort, but of course you don't earn anything, do you? So... Yeah, it makes it slow progress though, doesn't it? When you keep jumping, there's nothing there, jump, there's nothing there, jump, there's nothing there. Yeah, you can move on quite nicely, can't you? But yeah, it was... I mean, I know Commander Dimebar said uh, when he was out um, the day before, I think it was, the night where we were doing uh, Dimebar bingo, and he was coming a lot, across a lot of uh, not particularly enthusiastically brilliant systems then so it just must be you know i think i think you end up in certain areas where there's a lot of really good stuff and then of course you know you've got to take the rough with the smooth there's always going to be those areas where there's a whole lot of rubbish as well well i mean if it was good stuff all the time you'd board wouldn't you and a lot richer I thought actually, I thought actually, it was quite interesting when they said that the Spanish website has now got um, a new setting where for biologicals. So you put where you are and where you want to go, and it will basically give you a route um, where there's good biologicals, which might be worth a try, Commander. Considering well, that. Yeah, where do they get their biological data from? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is, are they tapped into somewhere that's, you know, reporting it's this? From, it's only from commanders flying around there, isn't it? Ultimately. By the sounds of it, it basically just gave you locations where, you know, you could stop off and... Uh, scan these biologicals so it'd be interesting to see how good it is it might be worth having an experiment with it
Eight jump days on the way back. Um, possibly along Colonia Bridge, Phil, maybe, because it might be another case of you know what tritium we've got on board the carriers by that point because of course colonia hasn't got any or or not very much so it, it might be a case that we have to do eight jumps on the way back to you know to get to certain uh systems that have got the tritium I mean, unless, you know, uh, it depends what sort of, like, um, you know, progress we make. Because I think arriving back sort of like September, October in the bu in the bubble is quite, quite nice. Um, especially if there's going to be updates and various different other things. And it also gives people a chance to, uh, I mean, we could stop off somewhere, for instance, to go mining, maybe, just outside of the bubble. Um, somewhere, you know, not that far off. So any commanders who want to leave the expedition at that point can do and fly back in. But if some people want to fill their hold up with uh, some valuables, um, some void opals or something, they can do. I imagine most people should come out of this expedition with at least a little bit of profit. I mean, that's not really the reason why we're doing it, though, is it? Well, I know you've got too much money, but... <laughs> You're trying to get rid of it, you've got so much money. I mean, actually, I'm sort of like keeping the status quo actually when it when it comes to uh cash i'm uh the biggest spend i've had was just uh setting some things up in colonia um getting some ships what you purchased some ships didn't you? i did yeah and also transferred some from um i think i bought two and i transferred about three across but only the small ones because you know once you start getting i mean even the cobra is ridiculously expensive to get trans transported from uh the bubble i think it was about 10 million i bought all my ships with me Yeah, it wasn't particularly great. This the last the last um, start wasn't particularly great for tritium refueling, but I don't think there was that many great places to find tritium, was there? I don't know. I don't know if people were busy or, or what. I know that Dave H posted some uh, hot spots. It's not easy to tell unless you've remembered all the uh, the numbers of your tritium yeah. in your uh, storage. How much you've sold on the, um, or how much you've purchased in the commodity market. I don't know whether it's just because people are selling it to me. Yeah, there could be. It would be nice to have some better tools to work out, you know what you are getting from the market a, a little bit more data yeah yeah
I'm afraid at the end of the day, basically, this expedition is just a question of tritium, really, and just the amounts. I think Commander Dimebar's got enough, hasn't he? I think he's just going through his. Yeah, so he, he reckons he's calculated it so that he can um, live off what he's got, doesn't he? Whether or not we believe his calculation or not, it's another thing. Um, Phil wants to know, where does he submit his loan application for a carrier? To you directly? <laughs> yeah, just drop me a direct message somewhere and I'll get to it. How much does he need? How much are you offering? Well, I've got enough for two carriers, so... Oh, that's perfect, Phil. <laughs> one for the week and one for the weekend. That's jump number two complete. Yeah, I don't seem to remember the systems that you jump through are particularly exciting at all. So Phil says he wants four and a half bill, but can cover <laughs> upgrades and costs going for, wow, that's four and a half billion to Commander Hatch is nothing. It's like loose change he f finds down the back of the sofa on board his carrier. It's like, oh. No problem at all, Dan. What's this digging <laughs> in my back? Oh, it's four and a half billion worth of credits. It'll just be, you know, one less box to keep tripping over there, won't it? It's all blood money, though, Phil. It's all blood money. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's you know, bad all... guys. Phil said he will accept any terms of repayment. You don't want to say that to Commander Hatch. <laughs> His terms might be pretty tough. Coming to fetch me every time I use the escape pod. Oh, Smiley wants some of the money as well. I think you might have a bit of a queue here, Commander Hatch. <laughs> I'll have to put a form together. How much does Smiley want? Hatch Bank. <laughs> yeah, can I take over the bank and say on? I mean, the daft thing is, is um, going back to that other game that I mentioned occasionally, Star Citizen. Um, you could actually, what? you could actually transfer that money across to another player. Because that's one of the f functions that they they added a couple of patches ago, two or three patches ago now, was the ability to pay credits to um, other players. I, I don't think, I think there was a limit. I think the problem with that as a mechanism and how it would work in Elite is that it would mean that people would skip a lot of the early game where there's so much fun to be had playing the game, going through the, the, the smaller ships. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Because, you know, if you just instantly give someone 10 billion credits because, you know, you've got 100 million. Um, 
Yeah, they're going to go straight from the, the stock Sidewinder to a Corvette. Yeah. I mean, about the only thing that would be in the way would be sort of like Imperial ranks, Imperial Navy rank and Federal Navy rank, wouldn't it? So you'd you'd have to well, work you, on that. Then, yeah. But but you could, you could you could still bypass an awful lot of the game, and um, I think it, the way the game scales is you got the ranks would mean that it would make things very easy for you. It's like you say, it takes a lot of the fun out of. Uh, a lot of fun out of the game. Also, FDev are incredibly uh, cagey when it comes to giving commanders any tools to do with the economy or money or anything like that. I mean, let's face it, if, you, if a commander does you a favour, yeah, the only way to be able to repay them is sort of a roundabout way. You know, you have to find some sort of resource that's worth quite a bit of money and give them that that way. Maybe in materials, but actual credits. Yeah, I know. Normally, you're, you know, transferring platinum or whatever, isn't it? And even that's fiddly. You yeah. literally got to dump it, and they've got to scoop it up. So it's it's far from easy to transfer large quantities of of credits. Well, I mean, what you can do now with the fleet carriers, obviously, is sell it to them for a discount price, which they can then sell. Yeah, they, they, I don't know. They just seemed as though... Um, I mean, the fact that they had the um, bartender... The amount that you could sell there was, you know, initially just a hundred, which of course a lot of commanders complained about. You just got the impression that I don't know whether it was they just left a zero off and it was a typo, or whether it was, you know, they didn't want to open the doors too wide for commanders selling things like materials for upgrading suits I, and weapons. I, I think it's one of those things where you. Should rolled out something with a very conservative amount take some feedback and extend it it's easier to do that than to uh, give people too much realizing it's unbalancing the game and then have to try and uh, reduce it down again yeah because people don't like it when uh, you start taking away again they nerfed the economy well someone's nipping about Not me, I don't do any nipping anywhere. They'll soon be back on board again when the uh, lockdown comes close. Pad lockdown. Then again, they can always um, catch Commander Dimebar's carrier. They miss. Don't know what that was? was that someone flying by my camera? So uh, I think it was uh, Sir Hypocrite was outside my carrier as I was jumping away, and I said, "Oh, you, you, you jumping on my carrier?" He said, "No, I'm, I'm going with the head." So uh, yeah, they've all got a favourite. It's always used. Yeah, they do. There's... It's the ship. It's the shipyard that does it. Yeah, I think so. I think there's you know there's quite a few commanders who have got a lot of their ships on board the Heb. Um, yeah. Like I say, it's just it's just a shame that you can't slave the carriers to another one. So you know, me and Commander Dimebar slave it to yours. And when you jumped, you know, this morning, we jumped with you, even though we're not there. I think that would be a really useful function. You know, the commander would have to give permission. You know. Yeah. So the, the commander who owns the carrier has to enable it. But it's a bit like uh, a carrier a wing. wingman. Yeah. 
A carrier, yeah, a carrier wing, basically. And you could you could say that a lot, you know, those um, the people doing it have to be friends or have to be part of the same squadron or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you could put some limitations in there just to make sure it isn't abused, but uh, just make it easier. Because the problem is, you know, is if, you know, you're a group, but, you know, real life things get in the way, um, you know, it's, it can be easy for the carriers to become separated. So. I mean, you keep saying this. What is this real life thing? Just life. <laughs> That thing that you t that thing that you don't have, <laughs> real yeah, life. Okay. You're, you're you're just a um you're just a, a commander full time, aren't you? Yeah, primarily. As we all are, but the problem is, you know, is that sometimes we get rude awakenings. I think that's one of the that's one of the things about Elite Dangerous. So is it is you know because it is a twenty four seven. You know, it's, it's always running. You know, you've sort of got to fit in your gameplay. I mean, I always forget, you know, that when I turn Elite Dangerous off, you know, it's still going in Australia. It's still going on uh, the west coast of the States. You know, this idea that, you know, it all goes quiet because, you know... I, it's I mean, you definitely notice that with uh, Community Goals. But, uh, you know, you, you see where it is in the evening, come back the next morning, and uh, just the sheer amount of numbers are moved. Phil, Phil says real life is my second job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the amount of time that some people dedicate to the game is scary. You know, I mean, I thought it was terrible that I've got like 37 weeks and then we had, um, uh, oh, what was the name of the commander? It was 72. Uh, yeah, Witchman, I I Witchman. Yeah. Witchman, I, um, in the Discord. I thought, I thought I was bad. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you've been playing for, what, seven years at that point? So real life was still six years of that. Yeah, and then you've got to remember that a lot of that was time when the... Uh, okay, I was in the game, but I wasn't actually playing it. I was uh, doing other stuff as well. Just sat on the pad. Watching the world yeah, go so, by. You know, you'd you'd uh, do a bit of work. And uh, when you had a break, you'd go off and do something. I mean, I've done that. I mean, I've just sort of like yeah. started doing something and just, um, and just watched the ships coming in to land at the starport. It's great. It would be nice to do it at a lot of the starports, but you can never get a table near the window. <laughs> and forget yeah, that, it. I mean, since, since they increased the population on the on the starports, you know, all those all those tables are now fully fully occupied. I mean, even on the carrier, even on the head, I can't get a. I own the damn carrier, and I can't even get one of my own <laughs> tables near the window. It's ridiculous. Yeah, we, we need some kind of em emote to uh, dismiss crew, don't we? Like you, back to work. <laughs> I mean, look at them, they don't even do anything, they don't even look as though they're they just sit around and just tap on a pad. And... Well, I'm hoping we get some additional animations for some of these characters to get a bit more variety. What, uh, busy typing away, you know, the navigation coordinates and things like that, yeah. It would be great. It will be interesting to see whether and what they add um for any carrier customizations i mean i imagine they must have them in the works at some point i was just surprised you know that they just had the th the the free ones with the initial launch but i think probably that was probably to do with the fact that they, they were quite busy at fdev i got the impression that a lot of the devs were involved with the warhammer thing so
Yeah, it's like you say, Phil, a hand animation or something like that. I mean, that would that would make a big difference. Just to make them seem as though they're a bit more with it. I mean, possibly another thing that they could do, add this to the list, is where a commander could occupy those seats. So, you know, you have someone in charge of carrier navigation or... Some sort of, like, management system. I'll add that to the list. Yeah, that's not great, is it? The the fact that they block chat. Uh, no, it's four and a bit minutes away from jumping at the moment. Four forty-five. It, it set, we set off um, about an hour ago, nearly. The stream started nearly an hour ago. Are you, are you um, back where the head was at, Smiley? Because if you do need a lift, there's still um, Commander Dimebar's carrier. I think he'd probably be jumping around about 8, eight o'clock in-game, something like that. Like we were saying, it'd be great if you could just slave these ships together and all of this would have been done at the same time. I've got to, s to my seat. Oh dear, I hope that isn't a commander wanting to get on a flight deck, because too late. Oh, it is. It's that lockdown. Even catches me out sometimes.
I think there's some sort of like delay smiley on the servers because I've noticed some very strange things. Um, I mean, it can even be something like um, updating your your ranks. Yeah, it's it's it throws some real peculiarities into the into the mix when it's jumping carriers. It it just. I know that we had that when we were on the Colonia Bridge, and um, I think at one point, I think there was like three Heb Isles or something. It was very strange. The, I will put the next destination on um, if you if you go to um, the navigation section in the discord it should be listed it will be the one just before Sagittarius A star can't remember what it is offhand because it's not a name that you would sort of right remember it's one of those rather long ones it's virtually unpronounceable ah oh, filter the rescue there it is Phil is awesome. He is. He's a, an asset to the expedition. He really is. Then uh, most commanders we've got with us are so. It does make a difference because, you know, to be brutally honest, you know, we were rather surprised about how popular we are. <laughs> we were expecting to do this expedition, just the three of us. I'd, I'd worked out, you know, the tritium and everything based on the fact that no one came along with us. Yeah, so there's the system that Phil mentioned in chat, which is where we're going to next. And then it's into, Sag into Sagittarius A star. Last time I was there was a couple of years ago. I think it'd be too soon to set it now. Oh. Someone's got very good taste in fighters. Oh, I forgot that Commander Hatch is a fed head. It can't be perfect. I'm sort of um, ship agnostic, really. 
As long as it's a good ship, I don't I don't really care what side. Although I have always had a bit of a thing for Imperial ships, even going back to um, when I first got interested in Elite with uh, the second Elite game, Frontier. Um, I think it was an Imperial trader, I think, was the ship that I had. You just <laughs> you're not prejudiced at all, are you? I think that the Cutter is one of the most beautiful ships in the game. It is just... It's got its limitations. But, you know, the, the styling of, of an Imperial Cutter is just... All of the Imperial ships... Um, one of the Imperial ships I would absolutely love to have introduced to the game is some sort of, like, Imperial Explorer. Because the Cutter doesn't, you know, he's capable of doing it. It's sort of like a good all-round multi-purpose ship. But after taking it through to Beagle Point and back, um, I mean, arguably, I could have done a few things to improve the jump range, like take the weapons off. I mean, it, it literally went as I used to fly it around the bubble, um, I made absolutely no attempt to sort of like streamline it and uh, turn it into an exploration ship. It literally just went as is. About the only thing that I added was a, a auto maintenance unit module thing. But other than that, how I used to fly it around. It was all A-grade stuff. And it had a jump range of about 37 light years. But I didn't take into consideration the fact that, of course, the star density, as you go out towards Beagle Point, you know, starts to drop. So that's when having that little bit of extra jump range comes in. Yes, I did. I th I thought it was a a, a great picture of um, his carrier in bits. We've had some very very strange things with the carriers, you know over the journey so far especially when it comes to the jumping sometimes you know it seems to work quite well you know and the carrier will arrive in the other system and you'll get a really good uh i think it was phil who took a i think it was phil who took a really good video of the heb jumping um with a star in the background Oh, he's definitely got serious combat withdrawal. Yeah. I mean, all commanders have got to keep a serious eye on him um, when it comes to those escape pods because he was looking in their direction on his stream uh, a few days ago. He actually went and pressed one and it was starting to come out to actually get him. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we can't put armed guards on any of the escape areas so I would not be surprised if we get to Beagle Point and we have uh, Commander Hatch try and make an escape oh he did some combat today what in a nav area or what ship combat or ground combat Oh, right. The Event Horizon installation. Ship combat.
I think one of the things I found after coming back from my last trip out here a couple of uh, years ago was um, going back into a station just totally freaked me out. Because, you know, you're just used to being by yourself. Um, I think it's slightly different now that there's carriers, but this is all pre-carrier. And, uh, yeah, you would think about coming through the slot and there's this, there's other ships in the system because of course you're just used to having a system to yourself and that kind of freaked me out a little bit getting back I was quite um, quite used to my own company The thing that I can't work out, though, is I'm sure that I travelled to from Sagittarius A Star to Beagle Point, and it took me a month. But then again, it's it's not going to take the carriers a month. It's just that we have that every other day um, as a is a rest day. Otherwise, I think it'd be about sixteen days in a carrier. I think that actually makes sense because I think what I was trying to do when I was heading out is each day that I was heading out to Beagle Point, it took me a month, like I say, but I was trying to do about 500 light years or more. It's one of those things where you just got to like chip away at the distance. I think everybody's got their favourite ship, so at the end of the day. Yeah, it's really hard work streaming because you've got to fill that dead air between, you know, the, the waiting until the, until the jump and then it all starts again. And that's one of the great things about having, you know, people in Discord is, you know, if you and Commander Dimebar are knocking about, I think we might have to open it up maybe. And, you know, if you guys aren't available... Or I'm not available, or Dimebar's not available. Just get someone else in who's on the expedition and just uh, find out a bit about them. I think the only way that you get a reaction um, from the carrier is if basically you fire on it. I think, you know, if you launch a fighter or anything that, like that near it, it's a hypocrite, uh, it, it, it doesn't really take very much notice as far as I'm aware. start having to go at the carrier and the carrier will bite back but otherwise it just sort of like tolerates um, fighters I'm sure I've had my fighter launched when I've been near it that's interesting Phil I don't, 
I know it, it came into the navigation panel, but I wasn't quite aware when. But I know we had a problem where I was, I think it was when we were about halfway along Colonia Bridge, and I was waiting for the my own carrier to arrive, and it didn't. It didn't appear in the, I think as soon as I saw that, I knew that there was a problem somewhere. It was a day when they were having problems with the servers at FDEV, so it could have been something to do with that. But there I was waiting for my carrier to arrive, and I actually had to fly to it to get it moving again. Because remotely, I just it did, just didn't seem as though it wanted to move. It was doing the jumps, but it was only doing the jumps in into a, the same system for some strange, bizarre reason. Good evening. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, long day. You sound so, knackered. Oh. Started, I got to work at 8 and I started then and I didn't finish. Well, obviously, I had an hour at lunch break, but uh, finished at half 5 and I was just like, oh, I've had enough of today. I know what you mean. It's been one of those days for me as well. Vets and. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How is. Um, the dog is all right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the dog is okay. I think it was a, it was a close, uh, close thing. You know, if it have if it had been any worse, potentially could have damaged the eyesight. But um, oh, it look it looks worse than it actually is, as the vet said. It's like one of those things. I mean, it's just a bit like a bit like any injury, isn't it, to your eye or you mm. know head injury or anything like that. It's just a lot of blood. It always looks a lot worse than it actually is. But um, yes. yeah, she was she was lucky. Hopefully, she will have learned a lesson, not to uh, poke go anywhere near a cat. Yeah. Well, it could have been a cat or a rat, according to the vet. Oh, really? Um, oh, okay. So whether she backed a rat into a corner, because she does enjoy chasing stuff. Uh. Commander Hatch has said, that's ruined it. I think he's talking about you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Love you all... too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Commander hey, Hatch has been very generous, because he's offered Phil the money for a carrier. I Is think, he? Well, yes, but uh, how is he going to pay him? I think Phil should, you know, take him to court, maybe. Yeah, that's probably the best way. Um, it's only oh, money, no... says Commander Hatch. He's just filthy rich, isn't he? Well, yes. Uh, indeedy. Uh, current location... Because we were saying about tritium levels at the last stop, you and Phil had a look for tritium sources, didn't you? And there wasn't. I don't think you found very much, was there? Uh, no, I didn't in the in the sort of um, intermediate places. Um, not at all. Um, S P U. Oh, Smiley's got the same problem again. Which is basically finding the carrier it's 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 what he's getting on his navigation screen is not what is happening with the carrier a bit like what, really? what we you know like what we had about halfway along where it said oh your carrier's here and it's like no it's not oh yeah and it, and it, and it wasn't yeah so you're starting your jumps now I am just programming it into um, Spanch right now. One, two, two, one, eight, six. Uh, I, I was talking earlier about. Uh, I just watched Commander Burr's uh, video for today. Have you right. seen it yet? No, I haven't. Um, I guess because I, I didn't know you were still going to be on, so I guess that was kind of my thought process for <clears throat> maybe watching whilst I waited for. Um, waited for everything to jump and all of that jazz. Why, well, what's he sort of said? Oh, he's made a, quite an interesting uh, piece about salvation. Apparently he fired the weapon off, um, I assume, at the, the Thursday server tick. Yeah, the, all three systems, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and the Thargoids have basically gone, ow, that really hurt. No dead bodies. No dead bodies. Oh, really? They've gone out of the oh. systems, but there's no dead or 
anything like that behind. So it's um, Commander Burr's basically well, saying, you know, I think he actually calls uh, the headline on, you know, Salvation Dud. Almost like when you have, um, oh, like the Borg or whoever, and they reset their shields. Yeah. And I know they call it shield modulations, but they reset their shields. And it means that um, yeah, they're not, yeah. the weapon's not as powerful. Yeah. That's probably a very good analogy. Um, but yeah, it's it sounds as though it's something along that. They, I mean, it's been quite a while since he last fired the weapon off anyway, and obviously the Thargoids have had enough um, time to I sort of like too. analyse it and think, yeah, we can overcome this guy. You know, with nice. his fancy weapon. Um, oh, I need to log into Twitch, don't I? Oh, idiot. <clears throat> Right, let me log into Twitch so I can see the abuse I'm getting from uh, Commander Hatch. <laughs> he's been actually quite restrained at the moment. Really? Yeah, he was, he was in the kitchen. Nice he was in the kitchen when he was talking with me, which was, you know, so I think we've got a, a new um, section. Some... Um... And now there's a rich guy throwing a party. <clears throat> so first jump queued I still think my, my theory that you know all of this money that he's got is starting to haunt him from all of the victims well, go to, yeah <laughs> go to, go to, yeah they're, they're all starting to they're weighing on his mind oh the new CG yeah that's oh is that that trillionaire guy um oh Rackham um, is it Rackham, Rackham yeah yeah, he's wanting all sorts of new stuff and rares and all of that jazz and yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, that's the only problem with the CGs, isn't it? Is that they're very bubble centric, aren't they? Yes. Um, you do get the occasional one out in Colonia. Um... But they tend to be ones that are like the uh, the bridge. It was like you know, from we're doing this from both ends. Yeah. Which, you know, was a great idea because, you know, it meant that both sides of the bubble could, uh, you know... The rewards. Yeah, participate. Made sense. Yeah. How many jumps have you got left to do? I've got two because I'm jumping into Sagittarius A-star. Right. And any commanders on board... Um, can get off and have a wander yeah. about have a look if they haven't already but then after that um as soon as the cooldown's finished i'm gonna start the the cycle up to head towards the system with explorers anchorage in just because like phil said on chat um phil the sensible one said about how a lot better it was for commanders jumping back in to go to the carrier right. uh, because you don't, I mean, especially after I saw the Great Annihilator um, up close and personal yesterday. It's not particularly a nice experience jumping into a system and then having a um, supermassive black hole in the face. No, true. So, uh, to, so to speak. I'm, uh, I'm just going to jump into um, the system with a uh, thingy anchorage in it. I'm just going to go straight there and then See how I feel, but I do still have this idea of um, taking a photo of um, <clears throat> the black hole and then um, <laughs> then using our, our exploring account to um, tweet uh, Brian Cox just for the laugh, just to say, we're in the vicinity, so we thought we'd take a look. That is... <laughs> uh, what I yeah. might actually do is I might... Uh, there, there is a YouTube clip about Sagittarius A-style. Uh, for those people who you know, can't get it on uh, BBC iPlayer, but it is uh, part of a series where Brian Cox talks about the universe. Mm. And he just, the I think it's <laughs> the third, epi third or fourth episode, he's talking about Sagittarius A-Star, and it is just mind-blowing, um, the stuff that they just come out with, you know, about this supermassive black hole. And the fact that there was a photo of it um, that 
you know, appeared recently. Yeah, uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, a bit spooky, I thought. But yeah, it, it is amazing when you consider how, one, how old it is, and two, how powerful it is. And I think that's one of the things, um, I can't remember who it was. Brian Cox talking about the universe, that's unusual. Yes, well, he does tend to sort of talk about the universe and things, doesn't he? But, you know, I found it interesting. So I just thought I'd mention. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I do remember one of his shows where he was talking about how long the universe has been in existence for, or um, how long we're sort of around in it before our sun sort of like eventually goes nova. How and then how long it is until the last star, you know, becomes a white dwarf and then just fades into dust, and then it's just nothing. At which point, my brain parked and went, "Does not compute." Well, the thing is about, you know, the black hole um, episode is it, it even sort of like delves into ph like things like philosophy. Oh, OK. You know, it, it's because it's all about time and space and things and how space, uh, you know, time slows down. And this, I mean, quite honestly, it's and then right at the end of the show. Brian sort of like says, you know, if you quite can't quite you know get your head round it don't worry because neither can we so <laughs> yeah exactly uh so smiley has just asked um which system should head be in now according to my universal cartographics it is in uh is it p h r o i p r i z d dash e c one eight four four spot on Fair enough. Which is what Phil's just said. I just couldn't be that. I, I was like, for Freud, pre. <laughs> no, I've had a long day. That's where I see your carrier, and then Mornington is in the system where. Um, Explorers Anchorages. Oh, so this next jump isn't actually that far. It's only 102 light years, just over 102 light years to Sagittarius A star. So that's not too bad. We are incredibly close. I must admit, I thought the next time I would be coming here would be with, you know, another cutter or something. I didn't imagine it, it would be with something like a fleet carrier. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. Well, the problem is, you know, is that when you um, consider, you know, something like a fleet carrier, it's great saying, oh, you know, I want to go out into space, but you've got to fuel the damn thing. Yeah, you do. Yeah, 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 very much so. And that is not a lot of fun by yourself. You know, if you've got... Um, a great set of commanders with you. Plug, plug. Um, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah. You, but you try doing it, you know, by yourself. It becomes... It's not, yeah, no, it's not I'm, enjoyable. I'm, I must admit, no, it's not I must enjoyable. Admit, I am, I'm sort of sitting here thinking, I wish that FDev would release the dates of when everything's going to start opening up, you know, when they're... Oh. Right, if you wanted to do all the swap and whatnot, this is when the date. This is when. Yes, the date exactly. Is. Why didn't they because have a date in there? Because that was. I, it. I, I need. I need to know uh, because what I don't want to do is end up all the way over at Bickle well, Point and go. Oh my God! I've got a lot of jumping to do to get. It's great them saying, um, "Oh, you know, nearer the time." But it's like you said, if you if you're an Xbox commander and you're out in the black, I mean, like you you know you're with us. You want as yeah. much warning as you can po possibly get. Yeah, I know. I might um, I might do some tweeting in a bit, or maybe next week if I, if the answer doesn't um, if I can make the oh it's Thursday, isn't it? I won't be able to do the uh, their live stream. Uh, I might just tweet one of the devs, or I might just tweet one of the CMs independently and go, 
do you think you could give us plenty of notice because I'm out in the black here? But, uh, there was a one because basically, fr from what I could see from the the post on the forum, because um, I actually went and retweeted it on my, on Twitter. Yeah. Because I thought you know it was useful, but the one thing that I was hoping, I mean, even if it was just sort of like a rough window, sort of like you know a quarter said, you know, the third quarter or the something next like quarter. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that would have given some indication, um, you know, to those people who. Because the thing is, these people might be away on holiday or, or, or all sorts of things. And they said, you know, it's a one-time offer, isn't it? Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, exactly. I'd, 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 I hope maybe in the next couple of weeks that they give more of an indication. I know they've got... Um, I don't want... Sw Why do I keep on pressing on the squadrons button? They've got update 12 to come, haven't they? Um it would be nice to know within the next month or so what their plans are, when they're going to do it. Oh, nice Commander Hatch has said, I'm sure there will be a reasonable window. He's so sensible, isn't he? Mm. He's so uh, sensible. Sorry, sorry, let me... Are you sure you want to ask, ask him that question? He's so sensible. I have two words. Ooh, go Escape on. pod. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> He's already. A... Yeah, I, to, to be fair, we are rapidly appro uh, approaching the holiday season. I mean, they did say later this. I mean, to be fair to them, I'm sure in the live stream they did say later this year or later. So you're half expecting maybe later on. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how many actually how many people actually apply for it as well. What sort of like numbers? I mean, I, I imagine that we'll probably I... never find out. I think I reckon they're going to get quite a lot. Two words: dime bar manoeuvre. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. It's getting but nasty. But I only did it the once. <laughs> yes, that is yeah, true. You, you you went onto my carrier and did it again. <laughs> yes, he did. One word. Paula. Double got him. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I feel like I'm a four year old <laughs> in the playground. I've gone to come to lose We're not to talking to Commander literally. Hatch anymore. He's not our friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a very good point for Consul Commander. There's nothing to do to lose for doing it. <clears throat> Well, someone was saying to me, why are you bothering getting rid of your, you know, your console commander? I'm like, well, part of the thing is, it, uh, part of the bargain might have to be that I have to get rid of that in order to fund the other thing. So I may as well just try and ditch it. Uh, it's a shame that you can't keep the carrier, really, isn't it? And just Well, yeah, it is. Know... It is a little, <clears throat> but, well... Who's to say you, you can't? You 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 di you um, mothball the carrier completely. You do your transfer. When the transfer comes back, you reinstate the carrier. Mm. Because I, you know, I was just thinking, you know, it'd be nice as a final gesture. You know, there's plenty of carriers required in some of the remote places around uh, the galaxy. I think I would be quite tempted to do that if I was doing that with. You know the console because it is going to be a copy, isn't it? That's going across. It's not yes. like it's. They're not doing anything else. No, it is. It's a copy. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> no, I, I, I did think it was rather strange that there wasn't sort of like any sort of like time reference, but you know, F Dev never really do things like that, so. Yes, uh, Phil said that um, about the. Hopefully, there will be a workaround there as well, which will be very tempting to mothball lots of ships.
was just looking at the um, purple exhaust on the uh, diamond back. That's I do actually have it. I don't actually use it on that many ships. Maybe I ought to. Oh. Oh, I quite like it. There's a um, fighter out there. There's a. Is there? Yeah, there's someone in a. Um... Oh yeah! Oh blimey! Yeah, they've just um, they've just buzzed the tower. That would be something that would be great. Uh, add it to the list. But, I mean, with, there's already one down in uh, the, the shipyard area of Heb. But it would be great if you could actually have a, a module where you could uh, deploy a couple of fighters uh, like that. Mm. I can never remember the name. It's... Uh, I'm a tip of my tongue. Better give them a salute. That would be quite good if they, like we were discussing the other day about, you know, making um, making uh, stations vulnerable. Yes. That would be quite. That would be quite good if they, um, you know, you you had to defend your carrier. Because I think we came up with the idea of it be a bit like the. Uh, the larger um, ships. There's certain missions, you know, where uh, um, an interdictor or whatever, or imperial interdictor, will come in, and then if you cause enough damage onto it, it'll capital ship. That's the word I was looking for. And if you cause enough damage on it, it will jump out again. And that might be quite a good thing to include for carriers. Yeah. So you could actually force carriers out of a system if you damage them enough. I imagine though there'd be a lot of salt in the forum about that, though. Uh, yes, there'd be a lot of carriers that got suddenly moved. <laughs> <clears throat> Commander Hatch is saying, "Grow up, children." After yeah, that, that was early... after we were picking our oh, picking. Yes, we were picking on him, Daddy. He's still picking on us. Probably post traumatic stress disorder or something. You've got to feel sorry for him in a way. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just this jump through to Sagittarius A star, and then we jump out of Sag A after taking a look at it, getting a few uh, screenshots possibly, and uh, then we just head over to where. Explorer's Anchorage is. And then people can get out and have a really good explore around the local area. It is pretty good. Um, some of the good areas, from what I remember, I'll have to take a look at the bookmarks again at some point. But there is some really good quality star systems around Sag A. That's useful. So it's... Because we were saying earlier, me and um, Commander Hatch, about, you know, the quality of the star systems weren't particularly great i mean i went out to the great annihilator in the in the last stream and i only made round about 40 million it was yeah my yeah i did around about 55 light years and i didn't make anywhere near as much as what i did in the previous one it, so yeah i mean it, it just i think it was just really down to the quality of the um quality of the systems around there because i was getting a lot of brown dwarfs yeah you know icy bodies stuff like that i did come across a couple of really big um ammonia worlds that took right. 10, 10 probes wow they were massive some of the biggest planets you know 
I've come, oh, it's just a shame you can't land on them, but uh, they really were absolutely huge. And I think they actually made the trip worth doing because, you know, there was quite a, a nice bit of value to them because otherwise it would have been a bit of a washout, to be honest. I mean, I didn't actually do it for the money. I just wanted to go to the Great Annihilator because I bookmarked it, you know, two years ago and never got there. Yeah, no, I'd, I think I... I did, yeah, like I say, I did 50, 50, 60 light years and only got 9 million. I was like, hmm? Previous place I did this. I think I got it, an awful lot more. It is surprising, you know, sometimes you go out and you don't think you've made that much and then you're, you're really surprised by the the larger amounts of cash that you make. And then at other times, I mean, I, when I was doing my elite rank, I went out uh, and I was farming neutron stars about 18,000 light years away from the... Thought, I've done enough, you know, I want to go home kind of thing. Yeah. Went back and I was about 50 million, something like that. It was a pitiful amount, exploration-wise. Uh, you know, if I'd have probably spent... I, I think I worked out that it, it can't have been 50 million. But anyway, it worked out that if I'd have spent another week out, out in the black, I would have got enough. So I actually had to go back out again at that oh, point. Oh, go back out and make that money and then, up. And then, just, and then eventually got the, the elite rank. But yeah, that was quite frustrating. Again, that was down to the fact that you've got no idea about how much you're making when you're scanning these things. No, you don't. We're just about to jump into a supermassive black hole and my crew just seemed totally and utterly near whatever. Oblivious. <laughs> uh, do I need to do it? Yeah, I've just done that. So, mm. Better sit down. Oh, we've got Commander Smiley with us. That's good. He managed to catch up with the oh, carrier. Oh, it, it is a bit of a problem. It really is with all of the servers sometimes throwing a wobbly and just... Like I say, at one point, you know, we ended up, I think, with about three Heb Isles. It was a bit like that episode of Red Dwarf. The Holly Hop Drive. Do you remember that? Uh, I think so. Yeah, after re-logging it was there. It's just a uh, shame, Smiley, that you have to do that, though, isn't it? It's just sort of like leap out of the game and then leap back in and everything's sorted out. Hopefully, you know, they might be able to iron out some of these bugs. Because I think the carriers do have one or two little gremlins with them. One of them's called Commander Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? See what I did? I did. I saw what you did there. <clears throat> He's probably having his tea, so he probably won't have um, heard or dinner, heard. or dinner down in your neck of the woods. Uh, or do you say tea? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah, no. I, well, I say. Oh both. no, he's still. <laughs> yeah. I say both. No. Yeah. You mean out of range? Oh, Spanch is... Spanch has told me to one place to jump to, and I've jumped there, and it's telling me it's 0.45 of a light year further on than what it... Did I jump to the wrong system then? Current location, C21. Why did I manage that? 
I don't know. It's easy to do. I think the problem is, is that, you know... It, I it, typed I... in... I typed in what it's got on the screen, and somehow it shoved me somewhere else. Oh, that's dear. Okay. No, that's... No, no, no. This is easily surmountable. I just type in where I currently am. I think that's one of the problems with having the navigation tied up with an external sort of like system you know where you've got to use somewhere like spanch i mean there's no other way of really doing it um you know navigation wise it sort of like filled a gap that should have been there in the game i think they whether fdev just didn't work on the assumption that carrier commanders would be making a whole lot of jumps i don't know but You would think, you know, that FDEB would realise that commanders were going to make multiple jumps. Yeah. E um, even if they limited it to the amount of tritium that you've got in the tank, that's all I'm asking. So, you know, you do like you do with your ship, you know, you click on somewhere and it... Oh, there have this been a, fun. there have been this a few wobbly fun. moments, Phil, with my navigation. There have been a few wobbly moments. This is really interesting. I'm typing in the system that I am in. Yeah. And it's not in Spanch. All oh, right. Well, I'm just about to jump into Sagittarius A Star, which um, sounds quite interesting it's, it's, to do. It's, it's not in Spanch. It's not. In you, you have literally jumped to a system that isn't there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I... You don't understand. Why is trying. Go back. We're in sponge. This system doesn't exist. So, this should be, in theory, this should be Sagittarius A star. Uh, the outside view will... That's rather boring. We're not actually anywhere near the. I don't suppose we would be though. Anywhere near the actual black hole itself. We're just queued up with all the rest of the. But it does give the opportunity for commanders to sort of get off and have a look at. The big, bad, beautiful, supermassive black hole that is Sagittarius A star. Indeed. Found by, of course, Zulu Romeo. First discovered by Zulu Romeo, who is a uh, commander on uh, Twitter that we all know. Lovely chap he is too. Flew out there, I believe, in a Cobra. This was like in the early days of the game. Un Unengineered Cobra. Wow. Somehow my carrier has positioned me. Don't quite know why I'm on that jump, but it just... <sighs> Oh, Explore Astro has said, you know that the transfer to PC from console is not happening now till the end of the year, it says on Twitter. Right, OK. Oh, well, who, said, who said that? Is is that from... Um, is that direct from them, Explore Astro, from uh, FDev? 
they probably have clarified something knowing them. They always do these clarifications, don't they? I mean, I must admit, when I was reading it, it did sound like um, towards the end of the year. Which would actually fit in quite nicely for you, wouldn't it? That would be perfect. Uh, okay, for, so for some reason, even though I typed the address incorrectly, I'm 99% sure I typed the address incorrectly, I've gone to a system that is two... It is 1.44 light years away, and that was enough to ruin the jumping sequence. So I think I don't understand how that happened, but oh, I'll just. Uh, so are you? 193 light years. I'm just going to run. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to randomly jump. This is going to go wrong. <laughs> well, you're not that far away from Sagittarius A star, though, are you? So, no, I'm not. Because really, so once I'm... once you get there, it's just a matter of because the next jump after that, if you're going to Sag J first, and then are you going directly to Explorers Anchorage? No, I'm going. Anchorage? I'm going to go to uh, Explorers Anchorage. I right. think. Right. Um, big star. But I won't waste the jump. I'm not going to do like a, a niddly piddly jump just to. No, it won't let me jump. What the? Why won't it let me jump? Uh, Phil says doing the dime bar maneuver in a carrier. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I am. He's cutting his own path, Phil. That's what he's doing. Is he? He doesn't need a navigator. He just. Navigates by the stars. Except Macari doesn't want to go. I mean, it'd be great if you could oh. just, you know, click on a destination that's not, uh, like I say, the amount of tritium that you've got in the tank dictates how far you can jump. But Right, 495 light years set. So the next and final jump is set. So anybody who wants to get off at Sagittarius A star can and have a look and then jump out and rejoin the carrier. Oh, yes, there it is. Below the carrier, just below, just there. Cool. Like I say, never expected it. To be jumping back into the uh, Sagittarius A star system with a carrier. That's a good thing about having a lot of commanders on board, though. It enables you to be able to do things like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed. indeed. But yeah, thanks for that, Explore Astro. Um, I must admit, I I got the the same sort of like impression, sort of like reading between. later this year yeah we were sort of like getting to the middle of the year though aren't we yeah later this year see that could be i mean that could know, be any time that's a problem to a certain extent you know that could be august or september time that's later this year i mean even if it, yeah, that's why i say i'm going to tweet I, i'm going to tweet them directly or somebody possibly bruce and get, just say look I'm part of this particular expedition. We're heading off to Beagle Star. Uh, sorry, Beagle Point. Can you it... give us a rough time frame of when that's going to be? Because it's not like you actually have to get back to the bubble to do it. You could just get back to Colonia and do it, couldn't you? Yeah, no.
So I think we're probably going to end up with... I think there's... How much tritium? So I've still got quite a bit on board. But there's round about a thousand units um, that I'm willing to buy. Price has gone up as well. Not quite as high as Commander Hatch. In fact, nowhere near as high as Commander Hatch. But I haven't got his kind of money. Um, and also going to be able to d donate it as well. If you are one of those commanders who doesn't like receiving money for the tritium. But, you know, do yourself a favour and I will buy it. Make a bit of money. So I think probably by the time that we jump out of this system, it'll be roughly about 500 units, 450 units, something like that, uh, that can be donated. And then there's near about 1,000 that I will uh, buy. So roughly about 1,500 altogether. Which, again, is nowhere near... I seriously thought that the, the reserve would have been far lower than that by this point it's just a shame that we couldn't really refuel that much in um, in Colonia I think that's something that needs to be addressed I know I keep on saying it but you know it just doesn't make sense not to have tritium in Colonia, or large amounts of tritium. You used to. I wonder about. I think at the moment it's basically anybody's guess when it arrives, but, you know, hopefully they'll have a good window of opportunity. I mean, even if it's, you know, a few weeks, it means that commanders will be able to get themselves to a place where they can get rid of their carrier easily without too much hassle before they start the uh, transfer process. Check out those lovely escape pods. You keep away from those. Don't even look at escape pods, you. I'm just having this horrible vision of you, you know, starting to do a stream at some point, you know, when we get out to Beagle Point, and all of a sudden you dash in for a, an escape pod and actually doing it. Probably just so you can get on Galnet News Digest again. I think it went to your head. I don't know what I did there. Yeah, you suddenly went quiet halfway yeah, through. I, I must have um, killed the uh, the app. Um, so I have now um, contacted Arf. I hope you mentioned the um, expedition, did you? I did. Do you know what I've just done? Oh, I shouldn't be left out. You seem to think I'm some some kind of attention seeker. Guess who said that in chat? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> and it's not Phil. Uh, no, it's not Phil. It wouldn't be Phil because Phil's far too sensible to do anything like that.
It will be interesting actually to find out though. You know, you put yourself into an escape pod at Beagle Point. Where do you end up at? Probably your last save, isn't it? Oh seven, Phil. Yeah, but where would that be? Would that be Sagittarius A star? Would you go back to Colonia? No, it'd be your last save on game, wouldn't it? I mean, I suppose. Well, I don't know. I mean, it would actually be quite good when you're activating the pod if it actually told you where you would end up at. I don't know whether it does. Oh, no, that's a magical mystery tour. You've got to do that. So have you uh, found another system to jump to, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You've managed to regain control of the situation. I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> have you seen what Commander Hatch has written in chat? No, I know. I know I didn't. That's why I'm retyping it. I did. I know. So first of all, I called him Bruce. Then I then I forgot. Then I deleted that one. Then I didn't actually at him. And now I'm having to retype for a third time. Told you I'm tired. Um, a better idea when the transfer window, um, the console transfer window, console transfer window, is so that uh, I can plan ahead. Whether they'll actually say anything is another matter, but, you know, you might. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm feeling very old man screams at clouds for no particular reason. Um... Muchos. Uh, no, we're just right. Thanks very much. That's much Right. Third time lucky I've now managed to type this correctly. So not long until the next jump, and then I think I'll end the stream after that, because... That's like fine. Commander, I'm, com I'll... Like Commander Dime Bar, I've had quite a bit of a day as well, so... Yeah. I'll probably just chug along in, um, in silence and just do it myself without streaming, I think. Yeah, I think that's probably the best option, Commander, and then uh, you don't have to worry about the stream. And It's quite difficult. Um, it's not so bad when you've got someone to talk to. Like, I've been quite lucky tonight. Having, uh... Well, the other the other night was quite good when I was di when you know when I was, when I was having a bad run of things and I was trying to guess the, uh, oh, the number yeah. of planets. Oh yeah, time bar bingo. That yeah, was great. Yeah, time bar bingo. Yeah, that was good fun. Um, we'll do that again. I, mean, I I think I streamed for a grand total of seven minutes. I was like, no, I can't be it, it was just no. No, I I think streaming is one of those things where you've got to be in the mood. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you have a great stream. Sometimes, you know, the stream's sort of a bit meh. Uh, you just got to take the rough with the smooth, I think, a lot of, a lot of the time. Yeah. Say, I would not want to do it as a job. Oh, God, no. You know. It's, but I suppose it's a lot work. of these people that do it as a job, they, you know, if you think, yeah, they have a screen, that they will be checking, and they'll be, but if you look at them, they're not actually... Not like us. We're we're purely focusing on a screen. Um, a lot of the sort of the big people, I guess, they're doing all sorts in their stream. Whereas, I suppose even gamers, that'd be so tough, wouldn't it? You don't need to be able to cope with so much before you get burnout. Well, the amount of them that do get burnout, the amount of them, you know, yeah. that you know, decide that they're going to take a break away from streaming because I think it's 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 that intense. Um, I mean, especially, you know, if you start becoming successful and things and start getting... A, because the pressure almost... You know, I mean, the maximum I've had, I think, tonight is... Eight. 
Yeah. What streams are you watching? Who was oh, that? He's Dar- having a go at me. He was, he's dare directing that at me because I said, you know, you've got the big people doing all sorts. Well, I mean, you know, there'll be people colouring and all sorts of jazz. I've I've muted a whole load of people because I just wasn't, you know, the first thing you come across when you're trying to open Twitch on and you've just got someone painting or doing something else, prancing about. I was like, oh, I just can't be bothered with that. Well, I think that's Licking one of the things I mean, it's one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realise about Twitch is it's not just people gaming. No. But yeah, I mean, once you start getting like serious viewing figures and everything, you know, the pressure in some respects sort of like builds because, you know, you want to maintain some sort of like um, work-life balance. Yeah. There are, a, he's right, there are a lot of charity ED streams going on at the moment. I'm quite happy if I get three or four. Yeah, we're not doing too badly. <laughs> no, you know, what? the thing is, though, you know, it's nice to be recognised, but it's just nice to just sort of blather on about nothing. Monday? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do Monday? Because of course we're not jumping carriers. Oh, we're not. Oh, no, of course we're not. No, no, no. But uh, um, I suppose we could do exploration y stuff or we could do the M word. Dare I mention the M word? M word? Yeah. Go on. Uh, Give me a clue. Rhymes with dining. Oh, mining. (laughs) Someone would have to mention mining, wouldn't they? Yeah, that is a possibility. Um... And some kind of meetup. That would be great for a stream. That would be great for a stream. Um... I'd be even funny if I could turn around and go, look, I'm there as well, and you're going, where? I am here. Can't you see me? Stick a cardboard (laughs) cutout in the in the corner of the um, in the corner of the bar on the carrier, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I think there is one good thing about me jumping to a random system. Neither of you two would have been there, and I can I can do what's affectionately known as doing a dime bar and sticking my name all over the um, system randomly. I just want a like a section of space that's just literally all yours. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Contact FDev. Dear FDev, I would like just, all of this to just to wind up Commander Hatch. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine him jumping through there trying to explore and everything is yours? That would be fantastic. Yeah, but like, we haven't spoken to him a while. What's he been doing? And I come on stream after about five days later going, Hi guys, I've been doing a little bit of exploration. Phil says not if I get I there say. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Phil is prolific. Phil, Phil get up. We've got quite a few commanders with us in fact virtually all of them who just seem to be everywhere they just seem as though they're they're going all over the place um you know it's fantastic to see you know just hope everybody's still enjoying themselves but that's a rather nice glow on the uh, deck of the carrier from the star oh that is let me just uh check outside before i sign off Yeah, rather a nice... Whoa! That's... Oh, is it me or we... That's either a really big star or we're really close. But yeah, that is... That is a, a really impressive scene to end this stream with. So that's it, folks. We've arrived at Sagittarius A star. Well... We've had a look at it, jumped out again, but it's very close by. It's only like three light years away. Um, I think we're probably going to be here for at least a week, I would say. Um, Definitely we need the Tritium's um, situation boosting a bit, I think. 
over the next uh, week or so. So um, probably a bit of mining needs required, uh, which means I'll probably run in the opposite direction, if you believe everything that Commander Hatch says. Um, <laughs> which you shouldn't. It's hot, hot, hot. Yeah, yeah, I think if you are visiting the Heb at the moment, you might need, like, factor 50,000 <laughs> sun cream on. Um, everyone is going to melt their ships because he's not reading chat. Anyway. So that's it for tonight's stream. Thank you very much for keeping me company, Commander Dimebart and Commander Hatch. Always much appreciated, gentlemen. Um, You're welcome. Oh, I'm between two stars, apparently. Oh, really? Ooh. Uh, well, I can always reposition the carrier if it's a bit dodgy. Oh, yeah, there's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'm, I'm that, sort of that'll like be the, interesting for your heat shields. I'm kind of like the filling in a star sandwich, aren't I? Um, yeah. What I might do is reposition the carrier after this. Stay in this system, but reposition the carrier so that it's um, slightly Not, safer for okay. commanders. Um, so I'll, I will do. Well, I might as well do that as the last. Thing before I cancel this stream, finish the stream. So, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what we can do. Because a certain Phil was saying about how he wanted a nice viewpoint. Well, you can you can get to that nice viewpoint because you've been there before, can't you? So, oh, it won't let me. But that might be because we're still cooling down. Are we? No, we're not. Who's that? Open the pod bay doors. Ooh, a reference. Ow. <laughs> Open pod bay doors. Ow. There. So we're going to be orbiting a Earth-like, I believe, which is something that Phil wanted Dust. to do at some point. But it also gets us out yes, of did, this. Didn't it? This rather nice, um, this rather nice-looking star sandwich that we're in. Right, that's it, folks. Thanks very much for keeping me company, gentlemen. And um, we'll probably You're be back welcome. at some point next week with some more streams. Uh, enjoy Sagittarius A Star. Have a good wonder about. Uh, and we'll see you again next week. Yeah. <sighs>